First, we are going to learn how to take an integrated water sample using a tube sampler. To start, place the tube sampler in the water. Lower it down to the desired depth. Pull the rope tightly until the rubber ball fits securely in the end of the tube sampler. Raise the tube sampler and place the end in a bucket. Loosen the rope and let the water drop out into the bucket. Now we will show how to filter your water sample. First you take a filter using the forceps and place it on the filter tower. Make sure that it is centered. Next you secure the top of the filter tower to the base and then attach the hand pump. Mix your water sample and measure out the desired amount to filter. This amount will change depending on how green or productive your water sample is. Pour the measured sample into the filter tower and use the hand pump to suction the water through the filter. Remove the top. Using the forceps, fold your filter into quarters. Be sure not to touch the top of the filter where the sample is. Place it in a film canister for safekeeping. Next up, is how to test your water sample for alkalinity. Note this is being done in the lab, but can also be done out in the field. First, measure out 100 milliliters of your sample and pour it into a flask. Add four drops of brome crystal green and swirl the flask. It will turn a blue color. Then pour the hydrochloric acid into a small beaker and using the syringe, take up a known amount of the acid. Then, slowly drip the acid into the flask, being sure to swirl the flask as you go. When the color changes from blue to green, the titration is complete. Finally, check the volume you have left in the syringe and the amount of acid you use to do the titration multiplied by 10 equals the total amount of alkalinity of the water. Now we are going to learn how to assemble the hydrolab. 
First, pull off the cover and attach the cable to the HydroLab. Then attach the other end of the cable to the meter. and turn on the meter. Now, how to use the HydroLab. Check the connections and make sure that the HydroLab is still on. Then remove the cover from the probe and secure the cover with the weight to the probe. Pour the pH 4 solution from the probe cover into a separate bottle. Lower the hydroplane into the water to your desired depth. Check the meter and record your data. Lower it to the next depth and repeat. When you are done, pull the hydrolab out of the water, take off the weight, and add the pH 4 solution back into the cover. Next we will learn how to use the most important tool a limnologist has, the Secchi Disc. The Secchi Disc is used to measure the turbidity of the water. First, lower the disc into the water to the point where you can't see it and record the depth. Then, pull it up so that you can just see it and record that depth. The average of these two depths is your Secchi depth. Remember to always take Secchi depth measurements on the shady side. And Next, we will use the light meter. First, turn it on. Then remove the red cap from the cover of the probe. Then you lower the light meter into the water to your desired depth. Record your data. Then you lower it to the next desired depth and record that measurement. Once you are done, remove the light meter from the water and be sure to place the cap back over the probe. Finally, we will be using a zooplankton net. First, make sure that you have everything that you need. A zooplankton net, a squirt bottle of water, a squirt bottle of ethanol, a funnel, a tube for your sample, and a sieve. Lower the zooplankton net into the water to the desired depth of your sample.
pull the net up through the water and then lower it back into the water slightly to rinse it and make sure that anything in the net is captured in the bottom. Then remove the bottom of the net and rinse it with water. Be sure to squirt the sides to remove all of the sample. pour it into your sieve. Pat the sieve to get the water out. Use ethanol to rinse what is in the sieve through the funnel into your tube. Make sure you rinse the funnel as well and cap your sample.